Welcome to Let's Talk Ed and Zahi. We are talking about community college students transferring to four-year schools to earn a bachelor's degree. And the question is, Zahi, is that a smooth process for everybody? Boy, two weeks in a row, Chris, that you you hand me a hot potato and make me look <laughs> like the good guy I'm never. Uh, uh, the answer is it seems that we've got many more obstacles in front of our students. And and uh, this, this was based uh, predominantly on a conversation that you and I had following uh, both of us reading uh, uh, a news article regarding this issue. Uh, the, the short answer to your question is it seems that we have many obstacles. You and I have seen obstacles firsthand in our own experiences. Uh, can we do better? That's going to be this discussion. Maybe maybe we can. and Or conversely, is there a chance that we may never be able to improve, which I really doubt. Right. You know, and obviously one of the, the things that, you know, people go to community colleges because they want to take their, you know, quote unquote generals at, at a community college and then transfer to a four year university. Uh, it, it's one of the value propositions that community colleges all over the country make. But what happens, and, and we hear this, uh, and we've heard it, is, well, I took these classes and they didn't transfer. And for students, that's incredibly frustrating uh, that, hey, I took this whatever it is, I expected it to transfer, and it didn't. And that's, you know... I understand the the level of frustration because now, in some cases, they have to take almost the exact same class again uh, at a much higher cost to them. Yes, and and in many instances, that student has already used up significant amount of their financial aid uh, dollars that they could receive. So then, uh, that student has to either find the money, which means that they may not be able to go full time they have to work or they have to take out student loans uh so it, it has individual family and societal uh implications uh, that's that's very true the article that you and i uh, read in in that spurred this conversation came out from the uh, hackinger uh report and and we'll link to it um in the description, but it spoke specifically and pertinently about uh, uh, northeastern uh, U.S. states uh, where some students have shown fearfulness about, you know, the amount of time and energy they're putting in and their angst about the transfer and some possibilities of uh, linking up that have happened between their local community colleges and universities. Those things are not new. Uh, here in Wisconsin, for example, uh, about 20 plus years ago, some of the private universities figured out that in order for them to remain in business, they needed to open up to the technical college uh, system students and create transfer opportunities, including three plus one, you know, in, in programs such as uh, nursing, uh, where there's a big demand for not just RNs, but BSNs by hospitals in order to gain certain uh, status uh, in their accreditation. Um, but in California, also, they've created the associate degree for transfer, uh, but only to the California State University, not the University of California. Uh, Texas have had many, uh, many such uh, initiatives and 24 states allow community colleges to offer certain bachelor's degree uh, programs. Now they're typically ones that don't conflict or 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 uh, you know mirror ones that are offered at uh, local universities for very obvious reasons. Yeah, and you know, so one of the things that I think you know, for a community college student that, that's really important for them uh, as they're going through their journey and wondering, hey, and are the classes that I'm taking relevant to what I want to do? I think that really goes to show the importance of the advising process. Uh, and, you know, of course, advisors have a lot of students that they work with. Uh, so it's a process that takes time. 
it takes effort, but it's really important, you know, if, hey, I have my heart set on going to this particular college and majoring in this particular program, it's really important because the advisors can, you know, work with those colleges and make sure that that student is taking the right kinds of classes to prepare for transfer. But the other reality that you and I know is it can be very different. What one college wants, another doesn't, and, and so on and so forth. And that makes it really confusing, muddy waters for students to tread. Yes, I've seen situations, and, and here I'm not trying to uh to sound like like colombo the uh, inspector but I've, I've i've seen situations where a course that is very obviously a uh, uh, lower division class being uh listed as an upper division course so th 300 400 level making it impossible to transfer that intro class from the lower division aka a, com a community college so we have to we have to be aware of that gamesmanship that many of us are trying to do because we want we want the students to take classes in our institution because we want to fill up our uh, classes in our sections, and this takes us back to a conversation we had in a, in our previous show with the chancellor of the Colorado Community College System, uh, Mr. Garcia, who spoke about perhaps the funding formula needing to to change in order to have a better alignment rather than Asian. What do you think? Am I, right, am I on the right track? Yeah, and, and you know, there's great incentive for a four-year university to make sure that students are taking classes at their institution. Uh, you know, if, if they're giving up credits to a community college, that's, that's money in their pocket that they're not getting. Uh, now, should they be looking at it solely as dollars and cents? No, uh, just like, you know, a community college can't look at it that way. But, you know, if there are some things built into the funding formula so that there are clear paths to transfer and clear understanding to transfer, you know, that that's important. Um, you know, again, you and I have worked uh, at institutions that are on the border of a state. And that means that, that there are students that can go to a university closer to home that's across state borders than they would find another, you know, within their own state. And that can lead to some other problems too, uh, because what one state wants to do, the other might not want to do. That's true. That's true. It, it's, it's an excellent point you bring up. Uh, and then we somehow it is easier for some four-year institutions to transfer um, advanced placement or transfer international baccalaureate classes or CLEP classes um, or, or the military uh, classes than it is to transfer a community college class, uh, which, which uh, to me raises the question of why do we in in education why do we have those divides that that seem to be driven by education for that individual student rather than thinking about how we're gonna improve uh, those students again it's it's not a knock on anybody this is how i'm seeing it at the same time i saw I read this this week a study by the uh, UC Davis, one of my prior uh, haunts, like you call them, their wheelhouse center um, for educational leadership. They they did an analysis and they found that 50% of the graduates of a bachelor degree from a two-year college, and, and mind you, in 2014, California allowed 15 colleges on a pilot basis to offer bachelor's degrees, 50% of those graduates have said they would not have pursued that education were it not for them being at the community college and being offered that opportunity. So how yeah. many people are missing out is the question. 
Absolutely. And we're going to, over our, our next couple of shows, talk about ways we see to improve all of this uh, to make sure that that transfer process is a smooth one for students. If you enjoy shows like this, be sure and uh, subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Ring that bell for notifications when we post new content. And of course, you can find us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. For Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time on Let's Talk Ed.